going to show you how to adjust the pressure switch, uh, which is this device here, pressure switch. And um, this pressure switch is, is a control on a commercial fridge, like a walk-in fridge or a, a commercial re refrigeration. And this pressure switch actually switches the compressor on and off at certain gas pressures. Now we use the gas pressure, it's more accurate than a thermostat, at a specific pressure on a specific gas it will show a specific temperature. Now you get a table with scale and on here they got settings um, what pressures they work at um, but that's just a guide. You have to do the adjustment according to your specific fridge. Now as a commercial fridge a compressor runs and the fridge gets colder, the gas pressure on the suction will drop and when the motor switches off and the temperature increases, the pressure will rise and with those rising pressure and the descending pressure we can find two pressures, one for the compressor to switch off and one to switch on and it will maintain that sequence. Um, now the ideal one is when the motor switches off, you want the motor to stay off long enough for all the ice to melt off the coil before it restarts and that way we can make itself defrosting. Now on certain gases at a certain pressure it will be something like that. On uh, low pressure gas like R12 or 134A normally at about 12 psi the cold room will be about 4 degrees and if you use R22 normally at about between 40 and 45 psi you'll achieve the same temperature. But when the fridge switches off on the low pressure gas at about 38 pounds, the coil would have melted and on R22 it goes up above 70, about 70 to 75 psi, the ice is normally melted. So let's adjust this one and first I've linked this onto a pipe with a gauge and we add pressure from a gas bottle and we can actually see what pressure our gauge shows and we'll hear a ticking sound when the pressure switch switches on. So let's just see where we start off. There's 40 PSI, 45, 50, 55, and it's just before 60, we heard that ticking sound, and we let the gas blow out and it switched on again. So we got that little range there, which we don't want, we want to go above 70. Now we adjust on the pressures, which you'll see there's a thicker spring and a thin spring. Now the thicker spring, by adjusting on that, you affect both sides, the on and off. And that's the first one we adjusted. So I've put a little more pressure onto the spring. Now we're going to add a little bit of gas pressure and we'll see what happens. Um, just now it was there past 65, I think. So we add, okay, we're still round about the same. So we turn this one, turn it quite a bit, we add the pressure and we'll see the pressure rise on the gauge, and there we about 70, and then if we go down again, about 60, so it's very close together, but We've got a higher one above 70. Let's just double check it um, where we are. So we add the gas pressure again. We go to about 70, which is good enough. And that will, the 70 will, your motor will switch off. But you want it to switch, I mean at 70 a motor will switch on, but you want it to switch off at about 40. Now that one we will adjust with a smaller spring, which is this one here. And... Um, I'll just blindly turn on it a bit and then we check what we've done. If we've gone the wrong way, the 70 stays the same. If we've gone the wrong way, it will be closer. If we've gone the right way, that pressure will drop quite a bit before it switches on. So it did drop a bit, so we can adjust a little bit more on it. Seventy stays the same. Fifty. Now I think I've got it for R22. I've got it almost right. So now the fridge is off and the pressure rises, and we want to go above seventy psi. 
there's just over 70 psi. The motor switched off, I mean switched on, and now the fridge is running and the pressure decreases. And somewhere between 45 and 40 pounds is normally where we want the motor to switch off again because that's the right temperature. And there we're about 42 or 43. So that sounds right. But just here for an example to show you something, if I take this, which is the thicker spring, and I just blindly turn on it, we will affect both pressures. Now if we add the pressure now, you see it goes close to 80. So that pressure increased. And just now we were about 42 or 43. And you see that's close to 50. So we've affected both pressures. If we turn this one back again, we'll find that both pressures will drop. But if you adjust on this one, only the bottom pressure gets affected. So with that, you can adjust your range wherever you want to. And that's how I adjust the pressure switch. Thank you.